Hello, hello everyone, welcome along to the channel, welcome along to this very, very, very special video. Today, it has happened. Football, as we know it, has been saved. Yay! <laughs> the European Super League is not going to happen. Hallelujah, there is a God up in the sky. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord for this. This is a beautiful day. It is a great day to be a football fan. But obviously, not all the water has been... Not all the water is under the bridge just yet, I'm telling you. There is still heat and backlash on the owners of these clubs that tried to ruin our beautiful game. And I will get to those in a second. But first of all, let me say, I am so glad that the European Super League is not happening and that the Breakaway Super League is indefinitely, well not indefinitely, but it is suspended for now. And they're all coming out and saying, oh, it cannot continue. Because last night, it was like a domino effect. One left, then another 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 left. And all the clubs have just thought, nah, we can't do this anymore. So, and there was um, big developing news at Manchester United as well last night. Ed Woodward, the vice chief executive chairman. Oh, no, he's not a chairman. Is, it, is he a chairman? I can't remember. Vice, vice chief executive at Manchester United. He has left his role at Manchester United. At the end of 2021, I think he said he's going to leave. But my God, it's all happening. And everyone, um, there was rumours that the event as chairman, um, president, was going to leave, but... That's all been put to rest. He's put it to rest himself, saying he's not leaving. But the voice of the people has won again. Beautiful to say. The voice of the fans has got this to be stopped in its tracks. Before it could even get off the ground, it has been stopped. Thank the mother fucking Lord. Thank you. There is a God in the sky watching over us as fans. Thank God. God, this is not going to happen. That would, The whole project would have ruined football completely. I mean, these 12 clubs signed up for this ridiculous idea where they were going to this Super League. It's basically like the NFL. There's no relegation. There's no nothing. You can't be punished or anything like that. You're basically going to be playing each team three, tw tw two, three times. It's, it's stupid. It is absolutely stupid. It was the most... Ludicrous idea ever. But I am so glad that it's not going to happen now. And last night, it happened. It was a domino effect. First, Chelsea came out and said they were withdrawing. Then Manchester City came out. And then the rest of the English clubs followed suit with their heartfelt statements from their website saying, oh, Arsenal's statement was the only one that I saw that's an apology to it. But we ain't accepting no apology. You tried to ruin our club. You tried to tarnish the reputation of our club. You tried to tarnish the history of our club. And we will never forgive that toupee-wearing American parasite that is Stan Kroenke. And from what I've heard, 6 o'clock Friday night, down at the Emirates, there is going to be a massive protest, massive protest to get that toupee wearing son of a bitch out of our club and hopefully, just hopefully we can voice our opinion enough, the fans can voice their opinion enough to get him out of the club, he has starved this club to death since he first came in, ever since he first came in, all we are is his little insurance policy on the side to keep his American businesses flying in America, the LA Rams, whatever else, whatever other bloody teams he runs. Like I say, he's got a, a ranch the, the size of Birmingham over there in America. It's a joke. Why is he the owner of Arsenal? And I hope that him and Josh are now sat on their asses and probably scratching their heads and thinking, well, we've royally fucked up here because... That's it. The fans are never going to forgive us. They're not. We're not. We're not going to forgive and forget. Never. Never will I forget this. Never will I forgive it. The fact that those idiots up there for each of the clubs. Not. I'm not just speaking for an Arsenal point of view. I'm speaking not just for everyone, but every fan 
around the world that they were going to tarnish the reputation of football, take the traditions of football grassroots away from everybody. It was a joke and it was never going to get going. I had a feeling the moment that it was announced that it would never get off the ground and it didn't. And I'm so glad that everyone finally saw sense and actually reversed their decisions and pulled out at the last minute. Thank the fin lord. Thank you, God. You have literally shone a light on football yesterday. It was a wonderful day. It was wonderful to see the downfall of these parasites up there as the owners of these clubs. And Florentino Perez, you can hang your head in shame, my friend. You were going to tarnish the best European club in the world. What for? To line your own pockets. Punk. Ridiculous. All of them. Every single one of them. Every single one of the owners of these clubs. You need to hang your heads in shame. I mean, I was reading this morning that the Liverpool owner John Hardy's come out and apologised. Liverpool fans ain't going to forgive him. No way can they forgive him. Joel Glazer's probably sat there right now thinking, oh, done fucked up here, Anna. He has, he's done fucked up, all right. And so are the rest of them. Because we ain't going to stop until you are out of our clubs once and for all. But there must have been something going on behind the scenes for these clubs to reconsider their position in this Super League. UEFA must have been involved somehow to get them out by offering them something, but I don't know. I haven't read into it properly. I haven't looked into it properly, but hey-ho. It's an amazing day. I am just so, so, so happy. So happy that football is back. It is not going to die. Not yet anyway, but according to Vaughn, the Super League themselves have released a statement saying they're going to rethink the project, but I don't think anyone's going to buy into their bullshit anymore. It is done. The Super League is officially dead. It never got off the ground. It's a wonderful day for football. It's a wonderful day for fans up and down the world, around the world, up and down the country. It is a wonderful feeling to wake up and realise that our clubs made the right decision in the end. But like I said, the fans, they should not be blaming the clubs, the managers, the players, the staff at the clubs. Blame the hierarchy, blame the chairmen, blame the vice chairmen, blame the executives, blame those idiots upstairs. They're the ones that tried to tarnish our clubs. They're the ones that tried to get rid of the history of football. They were the ones that were wanting to line their pockets full of oil money. Oil money that the Arabs decided to bring in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a joke, but I am so glad that there is a God in the sky, that he has looked down and giving us all hope, and giving us all a voice to voice our opinions against this, because the backlash on the back of that, when it was first announced, the backlash was so, so bad. Florentino came out a day ago, a couple of days back, and said that he was there to save football. Really? How is it saving football when it is only benefiting one person and the others around you? How is it benefiting teams like Leicester, teams like West Ham, teams like Everton? Those kind of clubs that are fighting for Champions League places right now and Europa League places right now. Jokes, utter jokes. Literally, I mean it. I'm literally... No Arsenal fan is going to forgive Stan for this. No Arsenal fan is going to forgive Josh for this. They need to hand their heads in shame. Game. Because it is over. The European Super League is dead. And I am so glad because I did not want to see my club destroyed, humiliated, made to look like a joke, made to look like a money merchant. I love my club. I love Arsenal. I've loved Arsenal for years. Even through the bad times. When most Arsenal fans were probably walking away from the club. There were people like me that stuck by them. Through thick and through thin. Through the bad times under Wenger. Through the good times under Wenger. 
Through the good times under Emery, through the bad times under Emery, through the good times under Arteta, through the bad times under Arteta. I'm not going anywhere. I'm not going to up sticks and move to Manchester City because they've got all the oil money. No way. No way am I going to do that. I'm not a plastic. I'm a true hard fan. I was there when Arsenal went to the European Cup final, the Champions League final, for the first time in 2006. I remember the semi-final against Villarreal when Jens Lehmann made that save. Oh, I was literally on my knees. I was crying. At that moment, I was thinking, oh, no, we're going out here. We could go out here to this. But Lehmann made the save, and we got to the final. We all know what happened there. Barcelona took us and beat us 2-1, but there were circumstances behind it that I can't be... Well, that... Lehmann getting sent off, Eto being offside for their goal, for his goal. But it is what it is. And the history of Arsenal has been saved. The club's reputation has been saved. But fans are still going to be revolting against Stan and Josh Kroenke. The Kroenkes, I hope you are watching on Friday night. Because literally, they're going to see and hear the Arsenal voice. They are going to hear the Arsenal voice in full effect. And I think Man United are doing the same for their game, I think, for um, Joe Glazer as well. And We'll see what happens. But for now, we know one thing. The Super League is gone, and I am so, so glad. And guys, football's been saved. And I am so glad of that. So, if you do enjoy the video, you know what to do by now. And until next time, which will probably be tomorrow for the preview and predicted lineup for the game against Everton. So, guys, till next time, we will see you later.